Hi, I'm Diane Bevelanda, Professor of Management Education at RSM, and I focus on issues around gender. So bias is an, actually is an error of judgment. It's an error of judgment. And we all suffer from all types of biases. Uh, we'll have biases to people, big people, to people of color, old people, etc. So we all have biases. And why do we do that? Because we put things into categories. And I'll give you an example how gender bias actually works. So we think of women as being kind, gentle, nurturing, listening, uh, good listening skills, good relationship skills. We think of them as pretty. Um, they need to be protected. And when we think of men, we think of men as being courageous. We think of men as being strong, risk-taking, ambitious, those type of traits. And when you think of leadership, what happens? We put leadership with men and not leadership with women. So when women act like leaders and they become more courageous or they become very ambitious, both men and women don't like them. And that is a form of gender bias. So for instance, in a job interview, women will have to show more evidence of competence than a man. Uh, men are hired or promoted on potential and women's, women will be uh, promoted on past achievements. Um, women's mistakes are highlighted at work longer and remembered longer. And quite often when we talk about uh, women's success, it's luck, not skill. Again, I'm gonna talk about business. So if we look at the statistics from uh, World Bank, and I'm talking about, uh, what's it, 2016, 155 countries still have at least one law that, woman, uh, that limits women's uh, economic potential. So I'll give you some examples. 41 countries, and you probably don't believe it, but prohibit women from working in certain factory jobs. And you think, how can this happen in today's uh, age? 29 countries do not allow women to work at night. And what is very surprising in Russia, for example, women are barred from 456 jobs because of gender bias, because they don't think women are strong enough, because it might limit their, or they, it might impact their reproduction uh, systems, or women are not safe, men feel women are not safe at night. And some of them think that women can't do the job, of course, because in the old days it was strength, but many jobs today have nothing to do with strength. Yeah. It has to do with intellectual capacity. And this is where I want to talk about um, what the seventh uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan, stated. He stated, gender equality is more than a goal in itself. Think about it. It is a precondition for meeting the challenge of reducing poverty, promoting sustainable development, and building good governance. So I think all of us, all of us, should start being more aware of gender equality and speaking up when we see it. Well, there's a great loss of talent, let's face it. Women are just as intelligent as men. They really are, and actually quite as ambitious as men are. So we have at the moment, think about this, men in positions they shouldn't be in and women who are in lower positions that they should not be in. So it's an absolute loss of talent. And again, I'm going to mention this, gender equality is not a woman's issue. It is really a shared issue and it's shared responsibility. Women, men, business and organization, well, and business and governments. So for instance, I'll give you an example. Women are interrupted more often in class by men. So if you see a woman telling a story in class or giving a, asking something and she's interrupted by one of her colleagues, some of the classmates can say, hey, let Ava just finish saying what she wants to say, for instance. Um, ask lecturers why they are not using examples of women. Why are many of the cases they use only of men? Why are there no role models that they're talking about that are women? Because most, and it's done, it's not done uh, 
on purpose, right? It's unconscious, right? But until you make people aware, and in the beginning, people in even the lecturers will say, oh, this is nonsense. I don't have any cases. It's not true. But, but do it, say it, because then people start becoming aware and start thinking about it. When I started looking at gender issues, and especially at um, Erasmus University, and I realized there was a problem, and the problem through education. As I said, not enough uh, women spoken about in leadership courses, female professors. I thought, what could I do to make a difference? And um, I went to the dean at that time, and the dean said, well, there's not really a problem, is there? I mean, everything's working, so, you know, what are you so worried about? So I thought, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a leadership course for women only, but the men will want to join. And then I met someone who had, uh, Rebecca Stevens, who had um, climbed, oh, she was the first female British female to summit Mount Everest. And then I realized I'm going to get women to climb Kilimanjaro in Africa. And I got enough money for 20 women to climb Kilimanjaro in Africa. And I set up a course which was credited. And, um, and then I advertised the course and the men went crazy. They said this was discrimination, and I had to agree with them. It was discrimination. And really, they wanted to climb. They wanted to, they negotiated, they fought with me, they wanted to climb, but I only had the money for women, which I got from companies, to climb. I would say, you know, if you want something or you see something which is not how it should be, be brave. That would be what I would say. I'd say be brave because, you know, I, not everyone loved what I did. Some of the men did not like what I did. Some of the students did not like what I did. And a lot of the faculty also did not like the fact that I managed to raise money to get 20 women to climb. But the female students loved it. And the university got a lot of media uh, because of this course. And I think if you see something that is not right, Try and change it, but in a positive way, not in a negative way. Try and do something that is positive. And I think those 20 women climbing Kilimanjaro was very positive. <laughs>